Hi, today we've got some new PCBs for a project which I've just started while we wait for the ring light PCBs to come in so that we can finish that project. Now what we've got here are some PCBs from PCBWay for a new aquarium lamp. Now I've had a four foot aquarium for about 14 years now but it's looking a little bit dated and also taking up quite a lot of room in the dining room where we have it. So I bought a new one and it's 60 by 60 by 60 centimeters. It's a opti white glass, so no frame or anything like that. And I think it looks really nice, but it needs a new light. So what we've got here is the first set of PCBs to support that with PCBs here from PCB Way. Let's have a look inside the box. So we get our free pen. We've got a six years sticker, and then we've got the PCBs themselves. Now we've got five of them. These are aluminium PCBs and they're two millimeters thick for the extra thermal conduction because bang in the middle here, we've got a Cree XHP 70.2. So a very high power LED here. And then we've got some colored LEDs around the outside just in case we want to augment the color slightly. Then obviously at the bottom, we've got our stencil so that we can assemble these LEDs onto the PCBs. So here are the PCBs and as you can see everything looks absolutely flawless, no complaints about the quality whatsoever. We've got our 2mm thickness aluminium board for reasons that I'll explain shortly. And then you can see we've got the nice flat backing for attaching our heatsink too. So as I said these were provided to me by PCBWay and PCBWay seem to be the most competitive I can find for aluminium PCBs like this. So. Here you can see I'd selected aluminium with the highest thermal conductivity, two watts per millikelvin. And then I chose the two millimeter thickness, although you can choose all the way up to 3.2 millimeter for extra thermal conductivity through the back plate. The thing that I found though is once you go bigger than two millimeters, the cost escalates quite quickly. So it suddenly goes up to about $204. And for the thickest, 3.2 millimeters, it's uh, $254. So uh, I think the two millimeters should be fine for this application, given that the highest power LED is right in the middle of the board anyway. And here are the other options that I selected. I did unintentionally select a white PCB with the black silk screen. I had intended to make a black PCB, but it shouldn't cause any trouble for this application and I didn't need the immersion gold. I did tick this option, which means that if they are running some of the boards that have immersion gold, then it might get put through that process. But again, it adds quite a bit of cost and I really didn't need it in this application. So I've just gone for hot air solder leveled finished with tenting wires and finished copper thickness of one ounce of copper. So if you are thinking about getting some aluminium PCBs made, I highly recommend that you go to the PCB Way website where you can get some of these uh, really quite attractive prices. Also at PCB Way, there's currently a Christmas sale. So if you click on the banner at the top, you can get some money off your orders, depending on how much you spend, anywhere from $5 all the way up to $200. There's also a lucky draw where you can win some prizes or some coupons. There's a sale for certain types of PCBs, so HDI and FPC or rigid flex PCBs and also a competition for Christmas projects. So if you are thinking about getting a Christmas project made, some baubles or a Christmas decoration, then don't forget to submit your entry here and you might win some prizes. So this light is going to be suspended above the aquarium. There's no lid on this aquarium whatsoever. Um, so this is gonna be obviously hanging down with the LEDs pointing down towards the aquarium. Then I've got this Cree branded heat sink, which is designed for one of their light fixtures. Uh, but it comes in at quite an attractive price for the amount of heat sinking that it provides. So this connects to the board through those mounting holes and I think it's designed for M3 screws to go through. Now obviously the heat sink is not as large as this PCB which is why we've gone for the thicker aluminium to conduct any heat from the extremities into the heat sink. Obviously the highest power device, the white LED, is bang in the middle so that is really where most of the heat is going to be generated. But we've got these Cree XPE LEDs which are right on the edge. So, but I think with this aluminium board we should get decent heat conduction through to the heat sink. And by the way, um, you'll recall that I did do that video about FR4 materials versus the aluminium PCBs and the thermal conductivity associated with it. This is one application where that FR4 material would, would not work because the heat sink pads here 
are all at different electrical potentials and therefore if we had just the copper wires going straight through the PCB onto the heatsink there's a chance that we could short out the various heatsink pads with our heatsink and with those copper pads. So this is one instance where we need that electrical isolation and that's where these aluminium PCBs really come into their own. So anyway, we've got the heatsink here, then we've got this rather chunky fan. It might be too powerful for what we need, but it does have speed control. Um, so that will be controlled by the microcontroller, but that's gonna mount onto the heatsink and you'll see we've got mounting holes in the PCB here here, here and here. So with some spacers, that's going to attach the fan to the front PCB. And then we haven't got it yet, but there's going to be one more PCB at the back here with all of the driver electronics on it and an ESP32 so that we can set the time and then also control all the schedules for when the LEDs and everything all turn on and off. So it's going to be a reasonably chunky unit. This is a 120 millimeter diameter PCB, but I think suspended from the aquarium, it shouldn't look too big or bulky. So let's have a little look at the LEDs. So here is the LED that we are using, the Cree X-Lamp XHP 70.2. And depending on how you wire it up on the PCB, you can drive it either at six volts or 12 volts nominal with drive currents of anywhere up to 4.8 amps at six volts or 2.4 amps at 12 which is really quite colossal for a four die LED. So these are really high power LEDs and really do need good heat sinking. So here is the exact LED that we're using. Similar to the ring light LEDs, we've managed to find some 5000 Kelvin 90 CRI LEDs here with a maximum luminous output of 1635 lumens at the test current. But if we then drive it at the maximum, I think we can more than double that luminous flux output. So we should be getting close to 4,000 lumens out from this LED. And for comparison, I said previously I was running four T5 tubes on an aquarium twice the size. So these 54 watt high output T5 tubes, 54.1 watts, and they were outputting 4,450 lumens at the start of their life. Now they do decrease dramatically over time, but just as a comparison, putting 54 watts in and getting 4,400 lumens, we're going to be putting about 29 watts in and hopefully getting around 4,000 lumens. So a lot more efficient, but from this single LED, I am going to be dropping quite a bit of light output. But the way that I had these set up, the peak light was only for about two hours in the day. At the rest of the times, it was much lower in brightness, otherwise it caused problems in the aquarium. And also, as I said, we've got some additional LEDs around the outside of the PCB to try and supplement the wavelengths specific to plant growth, but also for added effect, for example, so we can simulate some sunrise and sunset effects rather than just having white all the time. So for all that, we're going to be using these Cree X-Lamp XPE LEDs. And one thing that nearly caught me out, although it's simply a resistor change, they do have different maximum drive currents depending on the LED color. And obviously that is related to the substrate that the LED die itself is made from. But the amber LED, for example, can only be driven at 500 milliamps. The red can be only driven at up to 700 milliamps and the blue and the green can be driven at one amp. So um, you could accidentally fry the amber LED thinking that it could be driven at one amp if you hadn't have read the data sheet properly. Now onto the optics, we've got a few different types of LED lenses. There was an eBay seller that was selling quite a lot of these LED IL lenses at really good price. So the Cree XPE LEDs, we've got some of these lenses, 60 degree viewing angle, which is just about right for the height at which I want to suspend the light from the aquarium. And he also had these which are suitable for the X XHP 70.2. So I bought these, got it in, designed the PCB, and then I thought I'd just better check the data sheet just to make sure everything is all okay. And so I went through and you can see it's got the 60 degree wide viewing angle, suitable for this particular LED. So everything was looking okay. And it was only, I just, checked the specification for the XHP 70 and then I saw this so efficiency of 82% which means that we're potentially losing 20% of the light output from our LED 
and I did almost miss this spec point, but that also means quite a bit of heat would have been dissipated in the lens itself. So fortunately, at the last minute, I managed to adjust the PCB for a slightly different footprint, and instead we've got this one, um, slightly different type of construction, but you can see here that the efficiency is much higher, the XHP 70, 93%, so we're gonna be lose, losing a lot less light and thus a lot less energy in this lens. So just a word of warning, always check these specifications. You'd think most of the light would make it out of these lenses, but 20% is being lost in the optics, either as heat or just being backscattered onto the LED itself, which is not good. So the reason this video is so late is because this lens took quite a long time to come in. There weren't many suppliers that were stocking it, and I did manage to modify the PCB before I got it sent out, but you can see it's got the original round footprint for the other lens, but this one does actually slot in just in here, and that will be perfect for this high power LED in the middle. Now also on the PCB, we have a temperature sensor, which what we'll do is read off the temperature and if things are getting excessive, we'll be able to dim down this LED. I'm not quite sure how well this thermal setup is gonna work, um, without spinning this fan up at full speed because when you're driving an LED at such high currents you really want to keep it cool so that we get that maximum light output. Now in terms of connections onto the driver board we've got these pads here and this might cause us some trouble once we start attaching wires because uh, we're basically going to be soldering onto a heatsink uh, effectively because this is aluminium is very thermally conductive so we might have a bit of trouble soldering these wires onto here, but you can't have any through hole connections on the PCB because obviously you'd short straight out onto the aluminium substrate. And I didn't really find a suitable surface mount connector that could handle the high current of this particular LED here. So we might need to have the PCB itself on a hot plate just to keep it around 100 degrees or something so that when we solder these wires on it's a little bit easier to dump that extra power into it and get the pads up to temperature to melt the solder. Now unfortunately I don't have a squeegee that is wide enough to cover all of these pads so I'm probably going to apply it diagonally across this section and then across this section to get the coverage. We don't want to go over the same pads twice because that's where you risk getting the solder paste underneath the stencil and then just ruining the print. So I'm gonna be using this Solder King lead-free bismuth solder paste for this and the low temperature should really help us with the soldering with this aluminium substrate. And since we're gonna be applying this to these pads as well, that will probably also help us when it comes to soldering the wires. We don't need to heat it all the way up to 230 degrees or whatever to melt the solder. This one melts at much lower temperature. Now I do recommend if you can to get the paste in a tub rather than a syringe. The reason being it's quite tricky to estimate the amount of paste that you actually need for an application and then once it's out of the syringe it's very difficult to get it back in. In fact normally you end up just throwing that paste away unless you've got more PCBs to paste up. So uh, there's a tricky balance between applying enough paste to the stencil that you don't have to go over it twice but also you really don't want to waste too much. So if you can get it in a tub and then at least you can scrape it off and put it back in the tub when you're done. So slightly less pace than I would have liked just on these two pads here, but everything else looks perfect. So let's start placing the parts. Well, the Metcal did an amazing job. I had quite a chunky tip on the end there, but I ended up using solder paste so that I could load the pad up with solder paste and then hold the wire in place and solder. It made it a little bit easier than using a low melting point solder wire. So that all seems to be soldered up nicely. I've just given it a quick clean in the ultrasonic bath as well, um, because there was some flux residue around these pads from soldering, because if you heat it up too quickly, you don't follow the reflow profile of the solder paste and you end up with quite a lot of residue. So uh, that did all need cleaning off. 
Next up, I thought before we have a look at what it looks like over the aquarium, I thought we'd just see how true that 82% efficiency of that lens is. Right, so this is not the most scientific setup, but we've got the LED board pointing directly at the lux meter at a distance of 250 millimeters. With no lens, we're reading 509 lux. Now we'll place the first lens in place and that is now reading 1590 lux. Now let's swap it out for the improved lens and we're reading 1700 lux exactly. And by my calculations, that's about an 8% difference. So it really does improve the light output from this LED emitter and wastes less optical energy in the lens. So that's the PCB finished and we've attached all the lenses. As you can see, everything went together quite nicely. Also, I've bolted the heat sink to the aluminium PCB uh, with these um, nut screws and nylon washers. And it's also got some thermal compound between the heat sink and the PCB. You can see a bit of it oozing out there. One thing that I might add is a bit of heat shrink sleeving where these wires pass through the aluminium. It's loose, but I think just to avoid any chance of it cutting through, I think it's worth adding that heat shrink sleeving. Now what I'm quickly going to do is see how this behaves when the white LED is running at full current, because I do intend to drive it pretty much at maximum current. So we've got the infrared thermometer, it should pick up the heat from the heatsink quite nicely. As you can see at the moment, it's basically room temperature 25.6. So I'm now going to turn up the current to 2.4 amps. And that is intensely hot on my hand actually. That's giving a really nice amount of light and it's also a really nice colour. That 5000 Kelvin is really quite a natural colour to the light. So I'm just going to leave it, this running for a short while and we'll have a look at what the temperature comes out at. So it's been on around 10 minutes now and we seem to have settled somewhere around 50 degrees C with no fan, which is not too bad. Once we get the fan on there, that's easily going to cool that down to room temperature pretty much. So we'll be able to extend the life of the LED quite considerably. At the front you can see all the parts that are getting warm. Obviously the LED lenses on the coloured LEDs are blocking the heat, but you can see it's obviously most intense in the centre and then as it moves away, towards the edge you can see it's just that sort of reddish colour on the thermal camera. But that looks pretty good, it seems to be behaving quite nicely and yeah definitely once we get the fan on there, even just at slow speeds, that's going to keep it nice and cool. So this is how it looks like with the light over the aquarium at around 30 centimetres which is what I designed the optics for. As you rise it up you can see it changes the effect within the aquarium, but also there's quite a lot more light spillage on the wall. So you're obviously losing out on some of the light output. But really the colour of the light is spot on and the greens look really true. So that high CRI of 90 is really having a really nice effect on the aquarium. So I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. So that's the first part in this series. In the next video we're going to have a look at the LED driver for this high power LED. The drivers for the lower current LEDs are relatively straightforward to design. There's a slightly less choice when it comes to driving LEDs at higher currents like 2.4 amps or even 4.8 amps. So we'll have a look at that in the next video. A big thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. And until next time, thanks for watching.